Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We've got another fun interview from a World Series player, Ryan Yabra. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Talking Baseball. We appreciate you. We love you. We are actually on vacation week. We recorded this last week, and it's an interview with Ryan Yarbrough of the Tampa Bay Rays. He was on with us in spring training, and we had him back. My name's Jimmy. Jake's sitting right here. Trevor Plouffe coming to you live from California. Bug Bug Dude, the producer behind the dish. Trev, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, Fun to talk with a World Series participant. Um, I thought he was pretty insightful. That was cool to to pick his brain a little bit. And yes, we were teammates Durham Bulls 2017. So basically, it was like interviewing one of my best friends. That was nice. Nine games spent together with the Durham Bulls? Yeah, nine days. One spread bought. I bought P.F. Chang's. Now that I remember, I, Mm. I went back and it's a nice little spread for the guys. Did you get any of the lettuce wraps? Oh, yeah. I got everything. Okay. Everything. Yeah. It was fun. The Did people, I remember the people at P.F. Chang's said they'd never had a bigger order. So that was kind of cool. <sighs> wow. Jake, you ever order from P.F. Chang's? I have and probably competed with that order to a <laughs> degree uh, on a per person basis, just myself. Um, yeah, it was good. It was good seeing Trevor get his raise rocks off. That was fun. Uh, Yarby's the man. Uh, he's, he's a man that speaks to my soul a little bit when we we're talking about, you know, <laughs> he talked about like kind of zoning out and, and not paying attention when he's just chilling. I was like, yeah, live there, man. Uh, so appreciated him coming on. And uh, yeah, I feel like I had a dumb joke I was ready ready to make. But tre- oh, I was going to say we should do a when. When we find the time, we should do a documentary, nine nine games in Durham, and it'll be the, the Trevor Plouffe experience. I was de- I was depressed. Put it that way. <laughs> the end of my drama. career. Did he ever? Drama. Did Yarby ever pitch? You were playing first base. A little pickoff move from the lefty. He did. I, I looked it up. We we uh, I think we're in Charlotte, maybe, or he pitched against Charlotte. But I was in, I was playing first base. He did well. Pitched like six innings, one run, something like that. So. Hey. Okay. Pretty huge. It was a time I like to forget. I, you know, I don't like the bushes. I'm very much a baseball snob. I only like the major leagues. So I'm same. Push that out of my mind. Same. I don't even watch major league games on TV anymore. Art snob. <laughs> well, anyway, let's just throw it straight to this interview with Ryan. Uh, he's pretty fun, and so is DraftKings. This Sunday will truly be a Sunday like no other. With this weekend's major golf tournament, along with both professional and college football, there will be no shortage, no shortage of action. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, wants to put you in the center of the action with so many different ways to make it rain. If you haven't tried the app yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. To celebrate Sunday's action, DraftKings is ensuring all new users are covered up to $100. That's right. You bet they cover with risk-free Sunday betting on all of Sunday's action. This weekend, there's plenty of action to get in on, so head to the App Store now to start making it rain. Jake's favorite golfer is Jimenez. You, is, that, is he still a golfer? Yeah, Miguel. The he's mechanic? a little old now, but... Oh, he's always been old. Yeah. He was born an old soul. Ubaldo Jimenez, is that his name? Nope, that's the old pitcher. Uh, Miguel Jimenez. Yes. The mechanic. Yes. Cigars. Big Yoga. Time. Awesome. Bet on him. Uh, wa- uh, on top of these... Those great sign-up offers. DraftKings will have special promotions and odds boosts every Sunday of this year's tournament in in Augusta, Georgia. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOMBO when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. DraftKings Sportsbook is ensuring your Sunday bets up to $100. That's right. You bet, and they cover up to $100 when you use promo code JOMBOY during sign-up. For a limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Risk-free coverage paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Baseball! We are rejoined... My friend of the pod in 2020 AL 
Well, champion and mostly hit by pitch leader Ryan Yarbrough. Ryan, how you doing, brother? Wow, that's the most intricate and best intro I've ever had in my Thank life. You. That's incredible. So it's the funniest thing is I led the league in apparently hit by pitches, but like I don't throw hard enough. So does it like really hurt guys? Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Is it more like a thank you and just walk to first base kind of thing. I don't know, Trev, is it, how does it matter how hard it is depending on where you get hit, I guess? I don't know. Yeah. It's all about where you get hit, but a lot of times, man, Hey, if you hit me, I'm, I'm happy. If you're going to strike me out or hit me, hit, you can hit me. Have you ever apologized for hitting someone with a pitch? Cause I, maybe I'm super soft. I am super soft, Yeah, but I, I kind of want to make that a thing. I want pitchers to be like, Hey, I didn't mean to hit you. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think I've ever apologized. But at okay. the same time, I don't think anyone's like thinking it's intentional. At the same time, you know what I mean. I feel like there's okay. certain times where I think it's it's kind of obvious when it's happened, like when it's intentional, as you can kind of see at times that we've had some interesting scenarios this year. I don't know if you guys yeah. have followed some key games against some certain teams. But, Not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, so no, I don't. I don't think I ever did. If anything, I'm more like I think he swung because it's always like a <laughs> back swing, and I'm like, I'm like can I get a? Yeah, it's like on some check cutter inside or something. Like, can we like check or something? I'm like, oh man, he definitely swung. Like, this is crap. So if anything, it's more of that. You hit one guy twice. Do you remember who that was? Same game. Uh, no, no, two different games. You hit him twice. He must Ooh. think you hate him. Conspiracy. So. I played the Red Sox. I threw against them twice. I threw against the Blue Jays twice. Back-to-back -back outings, by the way, both those times. So that was always interesting. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming the Blue Jays. I feel like I threw against them like crazy. Was it the Blue Jays? No, it was the Nationals. Oh. Okay. Well, I Kurt, guess that makes sense. Kurt, Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah. 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 Oh, Kurt. God. The old uh, veteran, you're going after the old. Nah, okay. he 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 wanted it. I'm watching him now. Leaned he's in a he's leaning in. Oh yeah, I it's, mean that's a strike. It's, it's right there. That's yeah. a strike. It's right there. I don't know if it's a strike if it whacks him, but I mean I'll, I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> well, yeah, that one you actually he's got one of him the in the back. That, <laughs> he doesn't get hurt. Kurt's one of those guys that like will take balls, you know, as a catcher all the time and just like stay in the game. I have no idea how he does it. Very uh, very strong dude, man. High pain tolerance. God, catchers, man, they they grind back there. I don't know how they do it. I don't know it. Ugh. It's the Hawaiian blood too. He, he's got some Hawaiian roots. Those guys are always tough, dude. Love that. I love that. I love playing with Kurt. So, I'm not I'm not too excited that you hit him twice, but I mean, I, I wasn't really excited about him base. twice either. So, <laughs> one was a two-two pitch. So, just you know, lost we'll him. stop talking about. All right, we'll, we'll change. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, let's focus on how sad you were. No, I mean, what's what's the past? What's what's the past week or so been? I mean, are you're sad, and then are you kind of excited to escape the bubble, and now you're hitting golf balls into the water? What's what's been going on since since the World Series? Yeah, it's it's one of those weird things because it was. As you guys could kind of see, it was a weird playoffs in general because you're in the bubble and then we're in San Diego or we're no fans at all. We're able to because of California. And then we go to to Dallas and we have like small amount, like what was it, like 11,000, 12,000 fans, something like that. And I mean, it was really cool to have fan environment fans there, and especially all our families were there. And uh, yeah, it kind of sucked at the end. Obviously, you're it's what you work the whole season for, your whole life for is to get to the World Series and you win, but kind of think about it and everything that we accomplished this year, we're really proud of where we were at, what we kind of been through, especially in this crazy year to begin with. Uh, so, yeah, you kind of take a couple of days to think about it all, kind of go through it, and now you kind of just start the off season where you kind of look forward to next year. That's easy to turn the page after a little bit. Uh, even as a fan, it's like, all right, let's get just get excited for next year. We're right there. But uh, we 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 had you on the show. You joined us in a parking lot <laughs> in uh, spring training. Does that feel like a world ago to you as well? I mean, it's like a complete. That feels so long ago. Literally, 
forever before the virus back when you guys were slumming it in an rv for a while oh so my gosh <laughs> don't remind me of that man <laughs> yeah i think i think we just missed you Trav. i think you were like hanging out at twins camp or something like so you guys were going there the next day or yeah maybe yeah the you came before. in the next day yeah yeah so but no i mean yeah that was like the most fans we had all year were at those spring training games that's kind of crazy to think about weird uh, hey, was yeah. that was that weird? Um, you know, the Dodgers had had fans in the uh, championship series, and you guys didn't. Was it was it weird playing so long um, without it people in the stadium, and then just like the World Series, like Game One? It's like was that something that came into play at all, or is it like oh, this is normal, a return to normalcy? Yeah, maybe like when like the beginning of the first game started you kind of get used to having fans around and stuff like that but I mean we've been playing for so long I understand like maybe not this year but in the past and everything I I don't think it really bothered us that much I don't know personally for me it it didn't really affect me I'm really a oblivious guy so I probably didn't even realize half the people were there (laughs) um so I have a bad problem with that but no it it didn't bother at all at times if honestly like depending on some slower parts of the game it felt quieter then certain points with like the the crowd noise pumped in during just because like for whatever reason like I'm saying big plays that like the crowd was going crazy especially for only like eleven to twelve thousand people God knows what it would have felt like with a full packed stadium with certain events that went down in that World Series but I mean yeah you could definitely tell at certain points but it was it was funny to kind of think that sometimes the crowd noise was a little louder at times throughout the year during certain things. Here's a, a layup joke that I'm going to make anyway. Okay. When you're playing in the regular season at the Trop, did you ever have to, like, go to the sound guy and be like, dude, you know, it doesn't actually ever sound like this during the regular season. <laughs> like, oh. you're, you can turn that down a little bit. Do they no. turn music on in the Trop? Did, did I miss that? Or not music. Did they turn crowd noise on in the Trop? Did I miss that? Or Everyone had crowd noise. I think for the most part. I think oh, I mean, I, mean I, I thought you were talking about regular, a regular uh, oh. season. Oh. Oh, like during like a normal year? No, they don't do that, I don't think. I they think do I the, confused they do everybody. The, I'm going to shut the, up. I'm sorry. They do like the bell or or there's some noise they chime in, like the dun 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 a lot. Oh, Cause the John, bell? Yeah, because John Sterling on the radio like hates it whenever he goes to the trap. He's like, turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> He's his old man. The big cowbell people. Huge a lot cowbell. of DJ Kitty at the trap too. Is DJ Kitty pumping this year or is mm. he done? I didn't, we didn't have any mascots. We didn't have Raymond running around either. So, mm. but yeah, Raymond and DJ Kitty. Like, and I, I remember back in the day when DJ Kitty went viral, and I'm like, it just kind of stuck. And I was like, how did like it? Does, I don't understand I how it DJ makes sense, Kitty. but it's awesome. It's it's great. DJ Kitty's the man, but it's just like <laughs> the Tampa Bay Rays. And how does DJ Kitty come into the mix? <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly. That's a great question. I think you have the answer. It's just the Rays, man. Right? Like. They just do it's everything different. Right? There. That was uh, there was that other viral c- clip. Uh, someone was uh, Robbie Anderson was on the Carolina Panthers, and they have Sir Purr as their mascot, <laughs> and he just looks at him on the big board, and he goes, "Who's that bear?" And they're like, "Bro, that's, that's Sir Purr, dude." <laughs> it's it's one of the best clips uh, from the young football season. Uh, that one looked great. I saw that. Yarby, yeah, we were. So I, let's let's start with the high notes. Uh, we were at Game Four. Um, it you started that game. Uh, it's a game that goes down in MLB lore literally forever. And it's your wife's birthday. Most importantly, uh, send my regards always. Yeah, so um, appreciate that. What uh, it, I walk us through the whole thing, man, and and towards the end. Because, I, I mean, it's crazy, and, you know, I feel like everyone was confused at some point. Like, what's the locker room like after? Are you guys oh. just going nuts, or are you guys just staring at each other, like, eyes wide open and giggling? Like, <laughs> Start with the birthday. Did you wake up and yes. you're like, babe, sorry, I didn't get you a present because I'm pitching game one and pitching <laughs> game in the World four. Series, and I'm just a little preoccupied. Or did you have it pre-mapped out? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's it's funny because it, it is my wife's birthday, but it's also my dad's birthday as that wow. day as well. So my my whole family was there to begin with for the games, anyways. But so we I didn't have a gift for you because we didn't know like 
how everything was going to go tonight. And she knew that. So like, I basically like had the hotel make her a cake and we got her some flowers and we just kind of hung out until I had to head to the field. And luckily the, the wives kind of had a little birthday bash for her in their little area that they had for the world series. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it'll start. And then obviously gave up the two home runs that I personally gave up. And then, but it was just, as you guys saw, it was a back and forth battle, like literally the whole game. It's like, we'd go ahead and then they come back and then they'd go ahead and then we come back. Just one of those classic games that you're just stressed. And like we talked about it as a kind of a team with a couple other guys, like you literally as a player and I'm sure as a fan felt literally every single emotion possible in that game. Like you're like, super happy like you're you're playing the world series and then like you get all sad and then stressed out and then a little pissed off and then all of a sudden it's like pure joy and euphoria because like you just somehow come back and walk off in this like most improbable way i mean it, like you just get back to the locker room and you like you said we went nuts like it was crazy and then like normally there's bus times and everything to go back to the hotel i think there was a bunch of us that kind of like just sat there for a while and like hung out like I just need some time to process what just happened. Like what the hell just happened and what went on. So, um, ah, like, especially with a guy like Brett Phillips is awesome, dude. Great guy came over in the middle of the year and to come up with that clutch hit and to tie the game. And then obviously the, what kind of happened there to win the game, especially with Randy falling down the third baseline Crazy. and like trying to go back to third base and then realize like oh crap I could score and then him just like <laughs> laying there for a while like everyone was like out of breath chasing like Brett Phillips around the outfield and like he could like barely breathe afterwards like doing interviews it was awesome <laughs> yeah he he had to like sit down and, and really catch his breath I made the the breakdown of it and you can hear him saying like everyone comes up to him like Kiermaier comes up to him Lau comes right. up to him and and Brett's just like, I can't breathe I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> well, he, like, sprinted all the way to the outfield, and then, like, obviously he's the center of the pile, so he's the last guy to get any free space. And then, like, I'm sure he got tackled or something because he was at the bottom of the pile, and then he's, like, everyone's coming up after him, like, get a little extra, like, love on him and everything. He's just like, I just need space. Like, I need to breathe. <laughs> and he just could not breathe. We're like, is he all right? <laughs> like, I've never seen anything like that before. Speaking of, speaking of not breathing, you know, we hear from baseball players all the time about playoffs, about the World Series. I never got to experience any of that. What, what was, like, the biggest difference for you on the mound in a World Series game, starting a World Series game? Like, did you have to – what did you have to do differently to, like, be on your A game for that compared to a regular season game? You know, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like it is obviously the playoffs and everything is a – way more it's a way more intense completely different environment everything is under the microscope um and especially because the scouting and everything like that is kind of even taken up a notch with who you're facing they know what they're facing in you but at the same time i feel like i i I tried to treat it just like any other game i know it's easier said than done um but like I, i would do like my normal like work beforehand not try to do anything crazy and pump it up to be something more than it is and then you go out there with these so high expectations it's hard to achieve that you just kind of go through your normal routine kind of just so you can relax and when you go out there just kind of follow your game plan and make adjustments as you go did you feel that way like on the mound when you got up there first pitch were you like holy shit or was it yeah like it's another game yeah I think the the first inning especially because I fell behind a couple guys and then got Seager on a 3-0 line out to second base and then obviously Turner hitting the home run um after that first inning even with kind of normal starts you kind of are able to settle in a little bit kind of have an understanding of how everything's working for you what you're doing um but then obviously get a little pissed off with giving up a go-ahead homer in the first inning it's not the ideal start so um but yeah, after you maybe the first couple of pitches, and then you're kind of able to settle in, especially after that first inning, kind of just okay, just like any other game, let's get back to work. That's awesome. Do you have any idea before the start what the Rays and Cash has in mind of your distance or length? Like, does he say, "Hey, twice through, leave it all out there"? Hey, or does it just go do your game and and you'll you'll see me when you see me on the mound? 
Yeah, I think it's a, a little bit of both. I think it really depends on the person too. Um, but for me, like, I'm literally just going to just give me the ball and just take it away from me when you like when it's time. I don't need to know all this because then I'll start trying to potentially maybe do something a little different or try to overcompensate in some other way. So for me, it's like I don't really need to know, like, all the crazy logistics, but just let me go out there, do my thing. And when you want to make your move or what, what you kind of see fit and just we can go from there. When did uh when when did you guys know that Randy Rosarena was the best baseball player ever? <laughs> spring training, the original spring training. Really? Like, like really? Well, okay, so maybe not the best player on earth. <laughs> like he was hitting out of his gourd, but like you knew he was something special. Okay, like seriously, because he came into spring training and was absolutely mashing. I don't know if they what kind of statistical record they keep from spring trainings or stuff like that, or if they even keep that. But I know he hit really well in spring. And then, unfortunately, he got was a little bit behind the eight ball because of the, the virus and everything. But, I mean, gosh, when he came, when he got called up to the big leagues, he literally just crushed everything during the regular season. And then it just, like, continued and, like, if anything, went crazier in the postseason. And you're like, okay, like, this guy's hot. Like, it's cool. And then he just was, like, continuing, continuing, continuing. Like, Holy crap. Like, this guy is incredible. And then you like he's breaking records and doing all these stuff done by like in the postseason and just like one single postseason. It's like this is not like something you do like every day. This is extremely rare. Like, and it was incredibly to be a part of like, and he, he carried us at times during the postseason. It was it was unbelievable just watching him go out and do this on a daily basis. Yeah, spring training, spring training slash line, uh, four hundred batting average, five eighty six on base percentage, one dot one three six OPS. Wow, Whatever. dude, he's he's unbelievable. I don't think we'll ever see a World Series MVP from the losing team again. But if there was ever, you know, a, a, a slight tiny argument, people were tweeting like, "Give it to Randy," because he was right. uh, like an out of his mind on the race. No, 100%. Yeah, you don't – It's it, like you say, it's kind of tough to – a team that just lo- got eliminated to have the most valuable player, but he really did, like you said, make an argument for it. It was, it was incredible, and then he had his whole thing with the boots and everything, and, like, <laughs> he just was living his best life and enjoying every second of it. Are you, you know, before game four, are you sliding a foot in the boot just to see if there's anything going on? Some like, magic? did you catch Brett Phillips <laughs> wearing them or anything like that? No, like that was the thing. It's like I feel like for we're we are all probably a little superstitious. Like okay, just leave Randy in his boots alone. Like <laughs> don't working. mess with his don't mess with his mojo. Like we'll figure ours out. But like yeah, let that guy just keep doing whatever the heck he's doing. How how was the mound in Arlington? Because you guys hadn't played. You didn't play there until the World Series. You you know obviously you know these mounds are different. The backdrop looks different. What did you think when you when you got on that mound? Were you happy with it? Yeah, no, it was it was great. I think that was that was a really good point. Our our pitching coach Kyle Snyder, we had our because we ended up just having the one day of workouts there before the World Series started, so we were there for the workouts and everything. And he literally told every single pitcher, he's like, "Hey, like, go onto the mound and like, yeah, at least just kind of like look around, kind of get an idea, like visualize some stuff, so you have an idea." So this is literally no one besides anyone in the American and the West divisions have played there before like even this year and the Dodgers have been there forever, obviously because of the yeah. whole postseason. So yeah, that was, that was kind of great for him to say, cause it's not something you really think about off the top of your head. And then I was lucky enough to kind of throw in that game one. So kind of made things a little easier kind of going into the start on game four, having an understanding of where everything is and of your surroundings and made it a little easier. Do you find and it? We talked about that a lot about how the Dodgers, seemingly had home field advantage even though they weren't at home because they had been playing there for so long it's kind of a a strange thing and hopefully we don't have to deal with that anymore i know manfred has said he's interested in a neutral site world series i'm so against that it's not even funny but uh i don't know yeah it sounds like you guys were okay with the field i know your outfield did a good job out there like there wasn't anything crazy that went on and we were just we were thinking about it and we're happy that that nothing seemed like it was a home field advantage for the Dodgers. Right. No, and I think it, it helped a lot too with the fact that it was a turf field and we're, we play on one every single day at the Trop. So I feel like those kind of things always help us in mm-hmm. our favor. Um, but yeah, definitely it's a really cool stadium. It's huge. 
Um, but if anything, it was probably more of the fans and getting stuff, used to stuff like that or actually having off days again since we didn't have any all throughout the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It's kind of get your bearings more with those things. You're a tall guy. You mentioned pitching coach Schneider. He's a giant. Does he flex his height mm-hmm. on you all the time? He's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Our whole team is full of giants, man. We got yeah. Glass now. I mean, Charlie Morton's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Snell's 6'5". Sledgers. Dude, no. Sledgers is like 6'7", six, 6'8". Seven, six, seven, six, like, John Curtis was 6'5". Uh, Brian Thompson, even though he throws sidearms, like 6'6". Six, six. So it's just like a team full of giants. It's unbelievable. Do you think that Thompson's sidearm is the same as our normal? Ooh, like actual release point? Yeah, like you throw with a little funk. Like 5'7 <laughs> over the top Yeah, is his 6'6 six, six sidearm. sidearm. Yeah, yeah I can we see get that. We could get the clockwork on that with the graphic and stuff like that. <laughs> clockwork <laughs> graphic. That was good. Yeah. That was good. That'd be incredible. The things that go through you guys' mind, I wouldn't even thought about that, but I like that. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird world. Snyder, Snyder makes the most amount of mound visits out of any p- pitching coach ever. Do you ever be like, hey, man, I'm good? What are Not his really, mound visits they're, like? They're ex- extremely informative. Like, they're never, like, kind of like – they're full of information. Hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking, and we have get a game plan of obviously for what we're trying to do here. So, I feel like they're always a reason behind it. I mean, is that true? Is he like – is it, like, not even close in the league? <laughs> The yes, the yes network, Michael K on yes network, like it irks him beyond belief how many mound visits Snyder makes. Whenever they play the Rays, K's like, and here he comes doing his favorite thing again. <laughs> That's um, okay. New Yorkers are mad at everything. Come on, man. Yeah, well, Let Gary Sanchez, a little Gary Sanchez used to do the most mound visits by a catcher ever before they changed the rule, and K hated that as well. He would always complain <laughs> about too many mound visits. So K a just lot. doesn't like mound visits. A lot. Okay with them. It'll be well, all right. While we've stumbled into Trevor Plouffe's Yankees, I guess we can talk about it a little bit and let you drink some tears, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> how was that? Because <laughs> that, uh, that on our awesome. end, not a blast. And, you know, we on here we do a lot of, you know, the Yankees are the Yankees, the Yankees aren't the Yankees. Trevor gets mad. We mention something, and the day goes on. I mean, the Yankees are the Yankees to a degree. You guys take them down in game five. That, and all season. And all season. I mean, that just had to be a straight-up good time, right? Because it was a bad time on our end. Did you Wait. sing Did you Wait. sing <laughs> New York, New York and smoke cigars in the dugout? No. Okay. I, well, I smoked cigars. I smoked cigars okay. in the dugout, but I don't think I was out there for that particular time. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait, but wait a minute. Yeah. I just want to get this straight. You guys are Yankees fans? Yeah. Like Sometimes. Oh, gosh. Sometimes. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I didn't know that tiny, about you guys. Tiny um, incredible what I have to deal with, Ryan. It's oh, incredible, man. Gosh. No. I wish this upon mean, anybody. <laughs> I mean, that was the most – game five in the DS when Mike Brasso hit that home run. It, it just, life just made sense to me at that point. Like it just, everything <laughs> For just a lot seems of people. to click. Yeah, and I'm just like, like, you can't like even I don't even care what two baseball teams like with all the back backstory and everything that's been said and happened like earlier in the year things, like you can't like draw up a better storyline than that. Like mm-hmm. even if it was two different teams, like it just like that's just incredible. Like how that kind of ends and stuff like that. And man, like that that moment and then. The Brett Phillips walk-off, those are probably, like, the two biggest moments in my baseball career. Like, being in them, being able to be there, witnessing those two things was just pure madness, especially because what was that in the bottom of the eighth? or Because it wasn't a walk-off, right? Bottom eighth? Uh, bottom eighth. eighth. Eighth, yeah. Yeah, like, it's – my gosh. Like, that – That bat was insane. Like, what not it bat? And then to end it that way, if you if he even was to walk, he'd be like, what not it bat? But to hit the homer – that was I'm going to be like 100% honest. I forgot that's how that series ended. Yeah. And I'm probably, I mean, I know I'm impressed with myself that I blocked that out of my oh, brain. It's a mental block. Like I've, I, I mean, told, you guys, you said, you said game five, stuff. you said game five. And I thought, didn't you guys just win easy? And then you said that. I was like, Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> it was that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No man. big mental block. That yeah. sucked. You know, the guy who's chabbing throughout his head. And yeah. then Do you he consider yourself a horse? Ooh. 
I was – I consider my – a lot of the guys in the, the stable considered me there. And I was like, I'm an honorary member. Like, okay. let's not, like, if we made it the 89ers club, like, maybe we're, like, talking <laughs> here, but, like, this is the 98ers and, like. That'd be so, really like, funny oh, if you made your own hat yeah, and we, just switched the letters around. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> really we were funny. thinking about it. We had some ideas, like, a couple of us down there. It was, like, me, Fleming, and, like, a couple other guys were, like, talking, like, okay, we're going to make some T-shirts, and they're going to be really, really cool. But also probably really weird because uh, we're left-handed. But anyways, it's a, it's a different story. Uh, but yeah, like they're like cool about it. Like, yeah, come on in, man. Let's join it. I'm like, I'll, I'll hang out with you guys. But I don't – I'll be in the videos apparently with all your stuff. But like I don't – I'm not a guy at this table. I don't throw a 98 consistently. Like just oh, – I don't man. punch tickets. Should have really leaned into it and just had like a bale of hay in the uh, in the bullpen. Oh, <laughs> would have been good. Oh, you didn't see? We all got the ca- we got some cowboy hats when the World Series. Did you not see? Like we had some pictures of everyone wearing cowboy. Saw hats. that. Saw the shirts. I was happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're very happy for you, Ryan. Great job. Thank you. I just, I hey, tell. you you actually your contribution in Game Four, which the Yankees won, but you went five innings. In a quote unquote bullpen day, like that saved all your big horses for game five. Did that feel pretty good? I mean, it's uh, the Yankees won, but I, I think that game five plays out much different if you don't go eat. I think you threw 80 pitches, five innings. Glaber did take you to that one, that nice shot over there, you know, so third, third deck balcony <laughs> or whatever. He, I, I don't think you missed that one. So I think you got every, <laughs> every stitch of that ball, but yeah, like. It's one of those things where, like, if, even for losing her, you got to take a lot of pride in starting bulk guy, whatever you're doing that day of going deep. Because in a regular season or even the playoffs, especially when these playoff games where there's no off days, like, your bullpen guys can kind of take a beating depending on what the games are looking like. So when you're able to kind of step up and kind of give them a blow, let them kind of get some time off, it's, it's great. And, and even during the regular season, you kind of take a lot of – pride and joy in doing stuff like that i want i want to get deep right now okay wow it's what i like to do i want to get deep with you okay a lot of people have their preconceived notions about the rays organization Mm. what it means what it you know uh, embodies it's very analytically driven front office driven how do you describe the Rays organization. I try to Whoa. do it my best. I, I was only there for a couple months, three months or whatever. How do you describe like the Rays organizations for like the fans out there of baseball? I describe it as more deep. of, yeah, that's, that's wow. deep. That's, uh, hashtag deep. Uh, <laughs> it's the first thing that comes to mind is they're going to do whatever they can or find whatever advantage they can to put us in the best position to win, right? So, like, I understand we don't have this ginormous payroll like a lot of other teams are able to go out and uh, spend on a lot of these bigger free agents, but the the Rays do such a good job of finding guys for whatever reason other teams don't seem to appreciate. And they just get a hold of them and they just kind of work with them, especially on the pitching side where they've been so well-known in developing pitchers that, they just kind of help them, guide them to be the best they possibly can be. I mean, you saw guys like even this year, uh, John Curtis was incredible for us. A guy like we signed in the minor league, minor league free agent. Aaron Sleggers was huge for us. Um, uh, Josh Fleming came up from the minor leagues. Uh, even like Nick Anderson, like he was a good reliever with the Marlins, mm-hmm. and then he comes here and he's like one of the best relievers in baseball. So, like, they just keep seeming to, seeming to find ways to – get these guys and then put them in the best position to have success. And ever since I've been over here, because 2017 is when I got traded over here. Like I know, I think 2017 was the year where they were really in contention towards the end. And then the next three years we won 90 plus games and you just kind of every single year it's gotten better. I think someone told me, obviously it's a different year and in a normal season, we would have been on track to win over a hundred games. I think this year, something like that. I don't know how they do all those numbers, but it would have been something along those lines going 40 and 20 this year. So they're just, and they're just keep, we just keep getting better. Um, I think that's the scary part is we have a really good product on the field right now. Plus the, one of the highest rating farm systems in the league. So 
it's it's just going to be scary, man. We we have more guys coming, and it's going to be crazy. Oh yeah, another guy like Pete Fairbanks, another guy when it's yep. like Nick Solak was a big uh, hitting prospect for us, and get a guy who throws a hundred with a unbelievably like disappearing slider, and they just they just keep getting these guys, and you're like, oh, I don't understand this trade, and then a couple years on the road, you're like, oh, okay, now it makes sense, <laughs> like now I see what they're coming from. I mean, it just goes I, on and on, like yeah, Arthur I try, trade, I gosh. I, I tell these guys all the time, you know, I think I played for four organizations and it was by far the most buttoned up, well run organization that I was a part of. And that's, I always say they're <clears throat> the Rays are the, the better version of the Oakland A's. That's in my opinion, that's how, how I think people, how people think the Oakland A's are the Rays are that, but better. And just so you know, I picked the Rays preseason oh to win the World Series. I was on you guys from the Love start um, because I knew how well the organization was run and, and developing talent and all that stuff. So that's just me tooting my horn a little bit. But I, I appreciate you giving some insight because it really is, you know, the outside world doesn't get a peek into the Rays the way they do – get a peek into the Dodgers or the Yankees or the Red Sox. Like it's cool. I, I think it's cool at least for a guy like you to come on and kind of like talk about the organization. Yeah. I, um, it's one of those things where I think another thing that really stuck out, stood out to me is they really just let guys be themselves too here. Like there's, a, oh, Hey, yeah. just go out and handle your business. Like we don't care. Like about all those, some, how some teams have these little things, like these little rules that, uh, but they just they just worry about how you play on the field, man. Like they're just like go out, have some fun, be yourself. Like everyone's a little quirky, but we love that. Like that's who we are. And um, I think that's the thing is we we know that like we're not getting that recognition and kind of it stings a little bit because we know we have a good product on the field. But at the same time, I feel like we're we're now opening a lot of people's eyes, especially playoffs the last two years in the World Series this year. It's like you know, like we got a good team, man. Oh yeah. To go to, a, I have a really pressing question. Would you rather face Randy with the game on the line, or would you rather face Fairbanks in a staring competition? <laughs> That's the, you can't. How do you win either of those? You don't. You don't. You can't win either. So. I'm, I'm really close with Fairbanks on the team, and so it's it's hilarious. We give him so much crap about it. He doesn't know that about half of the time either. Like he's like. <laughs> He's like, I swear, I think I'm blinking. Like, he doesn't know. But <laughs> the camera only seems to find him at the most opportune times where he's just, like, bugged out of it. Like, yeah. It's like, he's just, oh, like, man. intense. Poor like, Fairbanks. Ryan, we need, Dude, we, need, we need to dive into this further. Uh, Pete Fairbanks, for about three weeks, was the bane of my existence. Um, <laughs> I see this guy come out of the Rays pen. Here comes another freak. Uh, pumping a hunge easy. Just wiping people out. And with that, he's got the big eyes, as you mentioned. And he's, like, huffing and puffing around the mound. It looks like he's giving himself a hype man speech while he's doing it. Another three weeks later, I find myself entranced with him. Another three weeks later, I'm in love with him. And I, I think there's some – he's a silly guy from what I've seen from some of the social media stuff. What is the Pete Fairbanks experience? Dude, you, you guys need to get him on the show, like – he will blow your mind. He is like quirky as it gets. Like, like you said, a very interesting guy. Uh, God, like when you kind of, you met him last year and he's obviously like the new guy around. So it's like, it takes a little while to kind of like, not like open up, but like get adjusted and get to know people a little bit. And then this year you got like the full Pete Fairbanks experience, just seeing him on a daily basis right now. So, uh, Dude, I'm telling you, if I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll text him right now. I need you guys to, like, hook up right now and, like, right. figure this thing on. out. We we connected briefly. We we were live streaming the games, and we did some weird – we were doing some weird juju stuff to try to get the Yankees Fuck going slash yeah. jinx the Rays. <laughs> so we did this thing. We were doing – we were eating a Pringle for each pitch, and when Fairbanks came in, we were Pringle Fairbanks. Our fans went nut job. Um, Pringle the, Fairbanks became like a rally cry. So I, someone reached out to me and was like, yo, I'm boys with Fairbanks. He thinks your guys are hilarious. And I was like, 
I don't know. Like, I've said some weird stuff about <laughs> Fairbanks. And so I reached out and I was like, dude, like, love what you're doing. Good luck, blah, blah, blah. Corny, uh, you know, thirsty in the DMs, basically what I do. And uh, Fairbanks came back and he was like, I just, what's cool, man? He goes, what's Pringle Fairbanks mean? And I, so I, ex- so, lost. <laughs> so I, I, I explained it and he was like, oh, dude, in the bullpen, we've got Rally Cheetos. So he was like, we're doing the same thing down there. So we're friends are friends are friends. Dude, it all makes sense, man. We're, we'll be in there. We'll be down in the bullpen, and we're like, okay, everybody take a piece. Like, here we go, rally time. <laughs> and it's just like – That's baseball. It just, dude, it's incredible. How many Pringles did you guys eat then? Oh, like, God. Geez. Man, we <laughs> ate – well, one game, it was against the Indians when it started. A Pringle per pitch. We killed a tube, one in a half yeah. inning. Brad oh, hands. gosh. It was, the Yankees won, though, so it, it was awesome. But it was disgusting. And so they were like rotisserie chicken flavored Pringles. Not good. No, oh, it's gross. Still feeling it. And then I moved on to bug. So that was. <laughs> I feel like a tube of Pringles between you two guys is like nothing. Come on. No, because Trev, it was gross. Yeah, it was gross. <laughs> Those videos out there was gross. Jake made us Add. eat like the rest of them that had fallen uh, on the we ground. Were sweeping crumbs. Sweeping it got crumbs. ugly. It was gross. It oh, got ugly. come on. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, we lived down so there. So for Christmas, I'll send you guys a couple. Cans of Pringles, is that what y'all want? That'd be great. That'd be mm-hmm. nice, yeah. Sign them. We'll put them on our shelf here. That'd be perfect. What about the series with the Astros? Was there any any animosity there or any – I'm more interested in when you guys are up 3-0 and then you're tied 3-3. Going into that oh. game seven, confidence still through the roof? I mean, because that's – I said, like, pressure's on you guys because if, if, you lo- if the Astros lose, no one remembers that series ever. Um, in the like, you know, baseball history. If you guys were to lose Game Seven, you're in the record books. You are a tidbit of history with us forever with the Yankees. Um, so, was there any like sense of like, oh my God, did the clubhouse feel tighter, or was it, you know, uh, status quo? You know, it was uh, like like you said, three zero. So you like the f- lose the first one or two, and you're like, okay, like still got plenty of time here. Like, let's not, we're not going to go in the panic mode or anything like that, and. I felt like it would have been different if we didn't have Charlie. Like, I wouldn't want to say that because all our starters are really good. Like, Glass now, obviously, Snell and Charlie have been great all year and are super clutch. But, I mean, just what Charlie's done in postseason game seven, like clinching games or, like, series clinching games, it's just, it's just been stupid. And I think that first inning he either punched out – he punched out a couple guys like, okay, here we go. Like, he's looking good. And he was, like, on his game, like, that whole time. So, yeah, I think a little bit, like, you're – we understood, like, the – it's never happened besides the, the Yankees in a, what, 04. So, um, it's highly improbable. But I don't think anyone was, like, super panicked. But we still had a lot of confidence in the team. We just kind of knew what was at stake. And uh, we're just going to go out there and do it. And then Charlie obviously shoved that game. He's good. Stud, man. He's going to come to the Yankees, I heard. <laughs> Is that what you heard? Are you saying that? I am not saying that. Okay. Unofficial. Okay. Jimmy, do your do your Charlie Morton's the best big game pitcher thing. Charlie Morton? Oh, because he's. it sounds like such an old school. Yeah, it's, I want to hear oh, Charlie Morton. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Morton, the best big game pitcher I've ever seen. He's uh, <laughs> it's a perfect old school baseball name. Charlie Morton. Black and white reel going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. It's, it fantastic. makes me think of a league of their own. Like you were in the broadcast booth of a league of their own. Jake's got the the better old school announcer voice. What's he doing then, Jake? Let's go. See. No, no, I, um, no, no, no. Again, I. And now the pressure's on. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not, I do not perform there. Um, and I, I actually, there's one more teammate I do have to ask you about. I'm doing a lot of teammates, and then I'll talk about you some more. Did, had, was there a point where you guys had to keep the glass now's hot stuff in check? Because don't get me wrong, I get it. Tall, <laughs> long hair, I've, very relatable for me. But it felt, like it, it felt like it went a step too far. He's a good-looking when? guy. When did it go too far? Like, what happened? There's I just think as, as this race postseason train started going and more people started going on the bandwagon, it was like, the, what, who's the guy? The, who does he look like? Cillian. Cillian Murphy. The guy from Peaky Blinders. Yeah. yeah. It's Peaky like uncanny. Peaky Blinders, yeah. He's good. Uh, Cillian I mean, Murphy's like probably a, what, like 5'7". 8.5 out of 10. Now. Rate all your teammates looks-wise. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I got to get a roster. I can help with this. I can help with this. <laughs> get the roster up. And it depends on how, what kind of looks you're going to, because Choi has a vibe. I yeah. just don't know where it fits in. <laughs> Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's type. Yeah, he's a type. I feel like when you think of the Tampa Bay Rays, okay. I feel like you think of two guys. Okay. Tyler Glass now and Kevin Kiermaier. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cillian Murphy's 5'7". So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is not, Jim. Are you serious? He's an actor. They're all short, but yes. Uh, I mean, I know that's the case, but five seven. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that like class now is getting compared to like the all oh, handsome. Oh, if they take a picture Murphy. together, if they were to take a picture bizarre. together, it ruins. He's silly. literally a foot taller than him. Yeah. God. Yeah. You ever? That's it, insane. That's crazy. You, you know Glass now, obviously, but <laughs> if you watch a video of him on mute and think of like what his voice sounds like, it's a British accent that comes out. <laughs> Try it one time. You already know him, but just try it. Oh, my God. Well, I'll, I'll have to figure that one out. I don't think I've ever thought about that. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Next time you're talking to your friend, just, make sure a British accent comes yeah. out of his mouth. It works. I I'll, just ask, I'll just ask him if he has a good accent, and we'll see about that. Ooh, okay. You know he's worked on He had. He has to have worked on it just a little bit just to mess with guys, right? Like, Ooh. I would hope so. Well, yeah. I would okay. hope. I can't believe you brought up Kiermaier because now we're going to lose Trev for, for the, oh, for the final God, 10 man. minutes. KK. God. The gold glove snub was ridiculous. Just want to throw that out there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a KK lover, and I told these guys, like, look, if he was on the Yankees, do you know how much you would love KK? Jake it'd loves be, him. It'd be ridiculous. Covers ground, and, man. And, you know, his thing after the game when he does is awesome, and he gets all the boys fired up, and – Good body, everything about him, man. Hey, you gotta love KK. Yarby, he <laughs> Trev said that he does a rap, but then he said it's not really a rap, and Ooh. he couldn't really describe whatever Kiermaier does after games. Could you try and tell us, like, what what is this? So I'm not gonna give all the details, just because it's yeah, kind don't of get our, in trouble, our, bro. No, it's not. It's not even that. I think it's just our, our kind of our post game yeah. thing, and I wanted to kind of keep it that way. But yeah, KK is like he's kind of like the heart and soul of the team, man. He's He's our fearless leader ever since I've been here. Um, and it, he just loves every minute of it. And, like, he loves going to war every single day with us. And he puts his – I mean, he puts his body on the line out there in the outfield. So, like, you really can't ask for anything more from a guy, especially the leader of our team. And, yeah, he he gets us fired up after wins. And then he, like, does his, his thing and we have a good time with it. But, I mean, obviously not after losses. I feel like that would be kind of weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he, it'll, it'll be weird. I don't know. I don't think, I don't know of anything else, any other teams, what really you do after wins anymore. I feel like that just seems normal to me now. So I don't know if you just go to other teams and like, I think other, other guys like, Oh, you just like kind of turn the music up and you have a good time and that's it. I'm like, that's it. Like that doesn't seem enough after a win. So would you say rap is a good description? Kind of. Yeah, I feel like that's – I feel like it's – I don't really know any other way to say it. It's Like he said, it's like it's a rap, but it's not. Like I don't okay. – it's, it's kind of a hard thing to – I'm lost. It's kind of a hard I thing like to it. do. When he makes a good catch behind you, uh, does he let you know right away? No. Like he – like that's just his normal routine, man. Like he, he like – if he makes a spectacular catch, like that's just what I do, man. Like, like see, this has got platinum on my glove. This is like – this is everyday life for me. So he's like, no, man, I got your back. And I'll, I'll like, obviously, like, the inning ends, I'll, like, wait for him at the at the dugout before going in. I'm like, hey, man, good, good stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, whatever you need. Just that, with that kind that. of guy. It's just his he really life. takes pride in his defense. I love that. Oh. He, like, really, really takes pride in it. Not just – he doesn't just say that. Like, he does. No. Every day in BP, like, he's getting after it. Some, he's working on his craft. Some of the plays he made – and I I try to pretend to be a center field snob, but I mean he made that one play in the gap and he threw it in like a shortstop. He looked like a shortstop deep in the hole throwing. Oh, it in and he it, kept as an Astro, right? Or as a Yankee, he kept him at first base. I, be it, a double against anyone if it was anyone else in center field. It's it's he just, did the Jeter jump throw. Yeah, from basically. from left center. That was crazy. Freak. Oh yeah, it's, it's pretty regular. His arm is stupid, by the way. Like. There's a couple guys you like wonder if you get him on a mound, like what it would be like. I would love to see what he would do on a mound just for the fact that his arm strength is just ridiculous. Dial it up. Get him on the hill. What yeah. about uh, G Man Choi versus Cole? Oh my God. 
Do you hope that you never have a player like that? That just like you can't get out. Dude, that's that's insane. Like those numbers he's put up. And they're like, they're dumb. They're stupid, and it's like against one of the best pitches in baseball. Like it's just, it's incredible. Does a little part of your heart feel for Garrett Cole in that moment as a, as pitcher, a pitcher, as the pitcher's community? Yeah, oh, it you're does. Like, yeah, you're gonna have to put me in a weird spot. <laughs> I don't know how to answer this. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, you have you obviously as a pitcher, but at the same time, you see G-Man coming up, and yeah. when you're facing the Yankees, you're like I like this matchup. Yeah, like I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about things right now. So it's kind of like that teammate I, slash pitcher thing. I stumbled into a weird baseball reference page. Here we go. And Kyle Snyder's G-Man Choi was Frank Thomas, which is a bit different because he's one. the best ever. So if, you, if, if Snyder's ever given you shit, just remind him that Frank Thomas owned him. I have the stats How here you. How do you find these things? Like, are you, like, just well, deep I wanted, dives in there? I wanted what? to see Snyder's height. And I don't know how what got me here. But <laughs> Frank Thomas had 6 for 11 with four homers off Snyder. So oh. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll probably admit it too. It's like, yeah, they're probably monster shots too. It'll probably be like the first thing he says or something. I don't know. Big boy. Yeah, he, he'll be like, yeah, whatever. How, yeah. Ma- how many Rays players uh, have actual animosity for Yankees players? And how many, like, how, how real does that beef get? Uh, or is it just on the field between the lines battle war? I mean, yeah. I mean, we were in the same hotel. So it's like, kind of see them with all the you see everyone with their families and everything and then so it's like you understand they're regular guys it's just kind of a, it's a baseball thing man it's just stuff happens and you kind of you just handle it on the field it's not like we were like hanging out and like drinking beers together or something at the the hotel in the bubble or anything like that but you kind of see people in the hallway and kind of just go about your day what's the uh what's the off-season plan i mean we uh we, we dove in pretty deep to this baseball season because we were like, well, shit, 60 games. We better do everything work-wise we can that now we're doing like 9 to 5 and we're going home and we don't know what to do with ourselves. We're, we're looking at our significant others like, do you, do you still like us? Do you want to watch TV shows? We don't know what to do. What's um Has wifey got something lined up for you? Are you guys watching shows? Are you working on that golf game? I hope so, or, or what else? The golf game needs a lot of work. I don't know if the off season is enough time for how much work that <laughs> needs. Um, yeah, I mean we're we have a home here. We just bought it right before here in uh in Tampa, right before summer camp started. Congrats. But I mean, so it's like we're we're kind of settled in. We're not having to do much. We're gonna enjoy the holidays and just hang out with our dog. I mean, it's kind of the off season. Like start working out in a couple of weeks and take some time off, but. At the same time, you start after a while, you're like, God, I need to go do something. Like, I'm getting a little antsy here. Uh, but now, yeah, a lot of Netflix, I'm sure. What you been Probably watching? Some, uh, I don't remember. We were watching something the other day. Uh, I can't even remember. It was literally just some random stuff on Netflix, some series that are like, that's, yeah, that's the epitome of my existence right <laughs> yeah. now. It's like, what are you watching? I don't even know, dude. Sapped him. Like, get, it's get on. To the day. It's on. We were like, like without baseball. I don't know. The wife's picking the show, so they're more like romantic comedy stuff, things along those lines. Sounds good. I'll check it out. <laughs> you pick up your phone while you're watching a show. What app do you go to? You an Instagram person? Twitter? Instagram. 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 Okay. I can't. I can't do Twitter. I don't know why. Twitter's what, not for me. Do you ever go to Twitter just to look at Pitching Ninja, see if you've made it? Uh, no, but people will tell me about it, but they don't have an Instagram account. Is it just not the same? I don't know. I don't go on Instagram, so I don't, we're in two different oh. worlds. Jake does both. I do both. I I think, you know, Twitter is conversations. Instagram is like image or video and it kind of, kind of get out of there, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I think that's why I like Instagram is I couldn't do Twitter because there's way too much information and way too many things being said and, especially during season with stats and all of this other stuff. I don't, I don't like knowing any of that. Like during seasons, I don't like knowing stats or anything just for the fact that you can kind of mess with your head. You're like, okay, if I can get it down to here, you know what I mean? Like you can start thinking about things a little too much. So Instagram, okay. yeah, you just put a, just put a picture out there on Instagram and you literally see others, other people's pictures. Like, oh, that's a cool picture. I like that picture. 
so it's a nice way to like just kill some time. Twitter's Twitter's crazy, man. So I you won't be signing up for the Jimmy Lytics, which Taylor Hearn oh, yeah. has uh, requested. And I just Uh-oh. tell him like, hey, Taylor, you're not good against guys <laughs> born in the Northeast. Be careful. I told him I'd give him some tips like that throughout the season. So, but, but I don't want to cloud Kirkson? you. What's that? You got you got the Tim Kirkson tips? Yeah, I'll just yeah, I'll just I'll 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 poke around. Jim's you know? looking for nuance. Like if if guys between six foot and six two hit you well, I'll let he's you know. the kind of guy that will relay that info to yeah, you. Yeah, if you want it, if you don't if want you it, don't, it's fine. But I'll just be like, I mean, I would love that. I feel like I just those information. Those we'll are kind of weird one. Okay. How do you like? Like who knows? Bald headed men might hit you really well. <laughs> That's something you need to know about. Like when Brett Gardner steps in the box, you need to know. Like, all right, let's buckle up. How do you like? How deep do you have to go to like Baseball Reference and all that stuff to find these things? Like, how long does it take you to find out? Like, Jimmy's a weirdo, like man. Yeah, Jimmy's I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of live in the deep webs of Baseball Reference. <laughs> so, you give sometimes, out the sometimes it's far too long. What was the one I did the other day? It was way I spent way too long. The one I did <laughs> on the plane, it was. Um, do you remember BBD? It was like guys between the ages of twenty six and. 30. Oh, over the age of 25 and taller than 6'1. Yeah. Crushed Urias. Urias. Urias gave up all his home runs to tall guy. <laughs> and, and all in the first three pitches of the at bat. And all in the first three pitches of the at bat, which actually was good info. The only time Urias ever gave up a home run was on the first or second pitch of the at bat. Really? Yeah, people were just jumping him, Kiermaier style. That's what he likes doing. So, yeah. That's just, a good deep dive. There it is. That's There's- pretty impressive. That's Jimmy Lytics right there. Yeah. Man. Jimmy impressive might be the wrong word. But yeah. You guys making a t-shirt of that or what? Something. Probably. Sure. I think like Rays yeah. would like that information maybe. I think we're going to go. looking for margin. I think we're going 89er shirt and then that. We did. Uh, we made, oh. a, we well, made a stable shirt. It's the worst shirt ever. Like, <laughs> we made it. We made it intentionally like ridiculous. It's centaurs. It's uh Cartoon horse legs with shirtless baseball players that resemble the Rays bullpen. And it says stable for guys and Rays fans every now and then are like, that shirt's horrible. (laughs) It's like, yeah, that was the goal. That was the goal. It was a bad shirt. Just say, thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. But yeah, we'll make a shirt. Jimmy Lytics. And I'll send you, I'll, I'll send it to you whether you want it or not. Just DM you on Instagram. Watch out for this guy. Mm. Watch, I mean, I could just tell you my, like you said before, I could just tell you my address right now over yeah. this so everyone this can know. Perfect. I'll just mail it to you. Phone number. Yeah. Trev, you got you got anything else in the chamber? I don't know. I was excited to ask about the Rays, and we talked about KK. You know I wanted to bring it there eventually. So Always. We Love that. that. But, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm happy that you're home enjoying the off season. I remember that feeling getting home and being like, this is kind of cool. I don't have anything to do. I don't know what to do with myself. But at the same time, it's kind of awesome. So <laughs> I'm happy for you, man. Appreciate it. Well, Trev, well, did you play for the Rays a little bit? Were you more of a St. Pete guy or are you a Tampa guy? Yeah, we got there middle of the season. So I lived uh, on St. Pete Beach, which was awesome. It's kind of hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I loved it, man. I enjoyed – I actually enjoyed the trop. I know some people are not into that, but I, I liked, like, knowing temperature, the time, like, we're going to play no matter what. Um, I thought the facility was pretty good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Rays. I tell these guys that all the time. I love – I've yet uh, to believe Heim. them. Have you been – have you guys been to the, to the Red trop, Sox. though? No, I've never been. I actually, I've driven past it a couple. I really want to go because I don't think it's going to be around for too much longer, Ooh. and I don't want to miss my window. I take. Why? Well, like, don't eat the concessions. That's my advice. That's what I've heard. Stay away from the concessions. You'll be okay. Well, yeah. we we ate the boomstick at uh, Arlington, so I think we can handle whatever they got. Did you there. eat the whole thing? Would we split it? No, we split it four ways. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't fat shame them. No, we split it four ways. No, Jake I mean, and I, it's like a I'm challenge or something, right? Jake and I could have ate a half I, We could have. Could have eaten a half easily, but we split it four ways. It was pretty good. Also, the Dolly Museum, I have to shout that out. That was a favorite of mine. I went there many times. I have not been there. I drive by, oh, you by gotta the go. all the time. I got to go now. Well, there's something to do in the off season. 
Classy you got to go to the Dolly Museum. It's amazing. And sometimes they have other exhibits. That, when I went uh, last time I was there, uh, they had an Andy Warhol thing. So it's a, it's a fun trip, man. They have a lot of great Dolly stuff there. Like, it's crazy the collection they have. So this know, is what talking what art now. Dolly? The artist? Oh, yes. Salvador oh. Dolly has a huge oh, Salvador museum. Salvador Dolly. Man. I never heard them separated before. How about that? Yeah. Well, you're not an art aficionado like I am. I'm very cultured. Yes. I live in Los Angeles. You guys know that. I'm Norman Rockwell or bust. <laughs> okay. All right. A little art to end it. <laughs> yeah, a little art to end it. <laughs> Thanks for joining Beautiful. us, Jeremy. We'll, we'll see catch you. up with you in spring training. or Yeah, hopefully we'll see you in spring. We'll see what the world looks like. But, uh, yeah, man, congrats on winning the AL. Uh, uh, send Fairbanks oh, away. Thanks, man. <laughs> I will. I'll send him the stare. Yeah. Give him a stare. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Enjoy dude. the rest of your day. No, appreciate it, guys. Baseball. And there you have it. That was the end of the interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Jake rated it 10 out of 10. Wow. That's pretty good. Trev, Yarby. what was your rating on our job? Not Yarbrough's performance. She was phenomenal. Our job. How do you rank us? To, uh, I got to take some points off. A little too much Yankees talk, as mm-hmm. always. It's expected, but, but I still have to. it was sad Yankees. You're right. It, it was sad Yankees. It was Jimmy blocking the freaking best that's that in the playoffs. Wasn't a, wasn't, a, wasn't a lie. I true that was that was real. Oh, um, crap, man. Um, but he was great. I got I'm now that he's gone, I gotta say something about him. Yeah. Because this is okay. a little bit of an insult. Ooh. And I didn't want to say it to Good his way to wrap face. up an interview. Okay. Yeah. So if he's watching this now, sorry. Got a little bit of Kyle Gibson in him. Like what do you guys think about that? or looks? Just look. Everything. I feel like it, I, I'm not. I felt why like is I was it, talking to Gibby? Isn't that a compliment? I mean, not, are, are you very close with Kyle Gibson? We're close, okay, but I'm not. You know, Kyle. Kyle's Kyle. I think we need Kyle's to know Gibby. Kyle. <laughs> we don't need two. We don't need two Kyle oh, Gibsons. Oh, so in the you're world. mad? He's you're worried that going he's going to take Kyle's territory. I don't know what I'm saying. All I'm saying is he reminded me of Kyle Gibson. Okay. okay. Who's your Which, friend? Which, yes, I'm just joking. It's a compliment because I freaking love Gibby. <laughs> and Yarbs was cool, man. I enjoyed talking to him. Where Especially are Especially when he started asking. The best part about the interview was when he started asking questions about me. That's yeah, what I like. I think he knows what he's doing, Trev, because when, when we saw him in spring training, he, he asked me about my Gruden impression. So he knows. Like, he... Mm. He's a pro taste guy, but he sends it back. Okay. Okay. I what like are you looking up, Jim? I was seeing if they're from, from the, the same, same place. place. Yeah, Gibby's, fr- Gibby's from Indiana. and from York- Texas. He went to high school in Indiana. He was born in Indiana. Who? Gibby. Oh, I was talking about Yarborough. I, I looked that up, too. He, he's Yarborough born was born Austin, in Texas. He was born there, but he went to high school in Florida. Yeah. So, I, they are like, you're right. Got a little oh, I, Did in. you guys not get that vibe? No. I don't know. We don't know Gibby, man. <laughs> yeah. You talk to him, though. We talked to him for Briefly. 10 minutes about labor negotiations. Yeah. It's not really like personality yeah, driven combo. How Gibby. far has this podcast come, baby? Yeah. <laughs> that is true. People want more labor <laughs> stuff. Well, they're going to get it, whether they want it or not. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys very much. We'll see you next week. We'll be back from vacation to do regular old news. I can't hear the music, but I think it's playing. It is. Check socks. It's over.